edition of a show. My name is Azad V. Singh and I'll be your presenter today. And I had the pleasure of working on a very unique documentary. So I'm a filmmaker and I was given the opportunity to work on a subject that's very special to all of us as Sikhs. And that is the subject of Kirtan and its relationship with Gurbani. And I'm joined by the executive producer who I had the pleasure of working with to bring this project to life, Professor Surinder Singh. So the conversation today will be casual. I think it'll be good for us to give the viewers an idea of how this project came about and how we started. And we can just take the conversation from there. So obviously we have the backstory and background having worked together now for almost three years on this project. I think uh, a good place maybe for yourself to explain to the audience why... Sikh musical heritage and what inspired you to want to share this story? It's, uh, as I've been saying, it's, it's been a pleasure working with you. Thank you. I think um, the future deserves to know. And I take a personal interest. For me, it is my job. It's, um, it's my responsibility to leave it the trail for future. Or somebody gave it to me. You know, so we have to pass on this this heritage. So I thought, you know, it, it would be a good idea to make a documentary because not everybody's good at, especially in our community, not good at reading books and uh, searching in libraries. There's no need for us to reinvent the wheel. So there's a lot of a um, lot of questions can be answered for somebody to have a quest. So this is where I thought you know the documentary will be a good idea, but the documentary on uh, we don't live in Punjab anymore. We, we you know it's English and it's Americans, Canadian kids. Um, they are uh, familiar to uh, some some standards. So talking to them in in their own comfort zone and sharing with them what is theirs was their heritage and idea was what's in it for us you know why should we revive this kirtan uh, is it happening in gurdwaras is happening in every home um, sooner you cross 50 as i was saying suddenly you remember <laughs> like oh i should do kirtan and you go to gurdwara classes and are we doing it right questioning all of what we are doing socially so that was that was the the thought behind it which uh, brought a beautiful sangat for myself, a sangat of uh, the same mindset like yours, Vaz and other other uh, team. It was a pleasure. I think that's what attracted me to the project when we first sat down in that cafe all those years ago when you described, because my background, I started my journey into the creative field as an audio engineer. So my relationship with music has always been quite intimate because I've always had a passion for it. So Kirtan and the instrumentation within Kirtan has always been certainly of interest to me, but I didn't know much about it. It wasn't an area where I had spent much time researching. My journey into Sikhi was more through the political side and, and the idea of Miri and Piri and Sikh sovereignty. So when we sat down and you introduced this wonderful heritage and lineage we had that the Guru Sahib had blessed us with and given us this amazing heritage, but a very uniquely thought out process of the relationship between Sikh instrumentation and Gurbani and the Shabad. And I think um, a starting point for that would be, so why Sikh musical heritage? And, and moving on from that, what about this story did you feel had to be told, that it had to be put together in film? My grandmother didn't tell me this story. That's why we called it untold story. Right. Neither my nani, neither my dadiji. They didn't have this story. You know, I had to find out about this story based on my intuition. But why the Sikh musical heritage? Because this is the only road goes to uh, solitude. You know, Sahaj, yeah. this is the only road which guarantees you a betterment in your mental health. 
regardless whatever your religion or country or culture is if you want if you don't want to be stressed then it's a simple way nanak's way and you don't have to be religious you don't have to be you just have to be human human who have a desire to live a happy and healthy life this is why this musical heritage which is a controlled therapy and program designed and delivered by guru nanak sahib a very very important program uh, but because it came under the umbrella of uh, religion the story got mingled into uh, different areas we say okay there was a nanak guru and he had pai mardana who used to play rabab and that was it every single day we do part we say asam hala pella but we don't contemplate on it i don't know it was by chance or what happened i just stopped at asa and i wanted to i started asking question this is where my grandmother took me to those people the teachers i had this is where i assembled the story i was thinking just yesterday it took me more than 30 years mm-hmm. to just get this script together that hey these are the steps of a step ladder going from my physical life to my mental life and which opens a door to my spiritual world um, guru's instruments and guru's prescription so that i can be happy because i'm a strong believer that your body is a shadow of your thoughts mm. and nanak guru says this man jeete jag jeet if you know how to win the heart of your mind if you know if you have those tools and techniques as adur singh then there's no way cancer will eat you there is no way the alzheimer will come and knock on your door there's no way you will suffer from arthritis you you can't because guru nanak have found the tool and mechanism so the mental health was the main feature for this documentary i wanted our kids to know that as a six they are responsible to make sure the whole humanity is in a good mental health and through through this documentary because you touch on mental health and we will discuss that a bit later because i think that is another documentary in itself that is in the pipeline so we can get to that but i think for this documentary and for the story of sick musical heritage and the untold story specifically we explore the relationship of the instruments and i'd love to talk a little t- without giving away too much of the documentary i'd love to talk about um what the experience was like for you when you were learning just how much of an important role the gurus played in creating and modifying instruments to specifically suit it for gurbani and the shabad i think it's it's just something which probably my brain cannot comprehend at the moment um it there are no words I'll, i have to write probably 20 books if i if i start talking about guru's viewpoint or you know creating an instrument to serve um or or you know for us to be navigated to a destination that's what the tool is can you imagine you have so much to say and you have paper at front of you yeah the purpose is there you have the subject but you don't have a pen mm. so that's what the role of rabab is the so rag rabab and shabd cannot be separated but this is not a afghani rabab this is not sindhi rabab this is not kashmiri rabab this is not tripudi rabab this is a nanak rabab known as frandia rabab mm-hmm. so how is it different playing style is different strings are different structure is different and why did guru nanak sahib had to engineer this particular rabab where pai mardana had two other rababs one at the, the when guru nanak sahib when he met him mm-hmm. and after when he left the talwandi to come to sultanpur he brought a new rabab and why did guru nanak discarded that rabab and gave him his own a specific um, a design in 1500s uh, from parwana the instrument was brought in as engineered by guru nanak sahib which baba mardana ji entire of you know rest of his life he played with guru sahib yeah. you know first udasi before just going to the first udasi first journey this is what guru sahib did 
and when when it's not just guru nanak sahib guru arjun sahib satyan bhulwan guru hargobind sahib guru gobind singh maharaj and the sikhs you know this is that story through this documentary a lot of historians a lot of researchers a lot of performers a lot a lot of custodians it's not just you and me yes you know yes. You, you, uh, it's, it's, there is it's just because it's not spoken doesn't mean it's gone and i think that that was one of the most fascinating parts for me was just listening to the spectrum of contributors we have in this documentary and and the varying fields and understanding just seeing the again it was this what what excited me the most as a filmmaker was having this idea revealed to me and just seeing the the absolute specifics and and the thought process or trying to to the best of my ability to see into the eyes of the gurus and see their thought process of modifying these instruments and creating altogether new instruments and also as we do discuss in the documentary at what stages during the development of gurbani that certain instruments are even introduced such as percussion which wasn't always there from day one it it came later on and i think this is something that allowed me to really get behind what we were trying to create because it developed into a story that allowed us to i think any filmmaker has this challenge when you're working on a documentary and you're trying to uh, condense 500 years plus of of history and heritage into 60 to 70 minutes how much can you include and 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 how much um do you have to sort of leave a supplementary material but i think we managed to cover it in such a way where i think it's a wonderful starting conversation to this topic and and one of the certainly important areas was the impact other entities had in affecting and transforming kitan such as the role of the british and and what impact that had in coming into this so when you were being taught when you were first learning kitan what what influences were there for you was it just from your ustad was it just what they had been passed down how familiar were they with the ideas of colonization and some of the things we discuss in the documentary they were you know like um to, to, to the people i was Uh, tutored by udasis and nirmalas of pandits the ustads um the muslims um from the church from from the temple there's a lot of you know it's it's not just a one angle the musical angle music is 2% maybe it's it's a bigger picture the kirtan is a psychological recomposition um my teacher mahanta um, jit singh used to say outside on the south gate of my my village with his taus mm-hmm. whoever will come he will give uh, fuliyan patase you know it's a sweet little uh, patasa is a, a sugar candy yes. and they say he'll put his taus on everybody's shoulder and i didn't understand this till very late and when i understood this i asked him why do you put your own instrument on the shoulder of the people don't even know what it is or how to hold it forget about guru gobind singh maharaj you know he said look in punjabi he said you know pani ch takka marna mera kam hai banda pura nahi bhijuga te kithe na kithe godiyan tak te bhijuga so he said you know my job is to push the person into the water the thrower of sound and with guru's instrument something will come out and look what came out i mean he pushed me um he he introduced me to these instruments he told me what go ra the toddi he called toddi bachcha he used to call it oh, you know is a tori you yeah. know um so uh is what they did to us and uh, you know how it is our responsibility to not hate them for what they did mm. but um you know show them that it's not in their hands to steal it or destroy our heritage we are alive and we'll keep it reviving absolutely and i think that was again one of the appealing aspects of this was something that is one of my driving factors as a director and as a filmmaker is to this idea of preservation i mean in an ideal scenario we wouldn't have to make documentaries because everybody would be so passionate about this subject matter that they the whole 
Banth would know this stuff inherently, but that's not the case. So it's so important to be able to preserve our history and look at it from a long term point of view because to see up again there that 30 you have 30 years of experience in this and for me I'm looking at what this story looks like 100 years from now if it's not preserved you know what will happen to this if if we don't have some form of uh, medium where this is recorded and I think in this day and age the video format is by far the most powerful the visual format is by far one of the most powerful so I think now we're here in in Canada we we're, we're here for the Canada premiere of the documentary which is taking place this Sunday at the Pearson Theater and how does it it's still sinking in for me you know it's 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 quite a it's a very humbling and and rewarding feeling to finally be able to share this with the sangat and get this out to a wider audience how did how has the experience been for you i just like i i feel relieved you know in a way because i've been knocking on people's doors mm-hmm. you know one on one i'll sit till 2 am 3 am 4 am sometime i don't get sleep because there are people i'm talking to them and showing the instruments i feel very responsible i don't want to die with the weight on my heart mm-hmm. that peop you know i could have done better so it kind of it's it made my life little bit little bit easy that 500 600 people will know the whole story in 70 minutes you know rest is now up to them they can choose they can decide what they want to do with their own heritage yeah well, so our job like i'm feeling little better so i can i can now look into the mainstream health issues you know uh, alzheimer or i can look into Uh, arthritis or heart problems i can look into different diseases like you know stress and uh, bring guru nanak's work you know uh, which is there hmm. prominently and and showcase that more through practice with you know rather than talking about oh hey this is our rabab and this is how it sounds like documentary is there so thoda ja sukh mila menu you know i'm excited of course you yes. know excited um guruji you know blessed us all to get this product um, ready you know through lot of sangats you know canadian um, sangat american sangat sangat from uk worked very hard yeah. to to get this this documentary out there uh, it and i think that's something that should be commended as well that this documentary was supported and funded by the sangha this this is the true meaning of a community based yes. project this is not a private project this is not a film by an individual or an organization this is film by community for the community yes yeah yes. every single cent we spent came from sangha is a sangha's film to serve guru maharaj and his heritage for the sangha of the future So I think it's is it was just such a beautiful journey you know it took us a couple of years but once you see the film of course we both have seen it yes. <laughs> once they'll see the film they, they they'll know how rich and incredible their world is and guru ne sanu sukhi ke ne banaya hadi and how beautiful these instruments are how simple they are and how 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 majestic their sound is and i i think that's a that's a wonderful place to conclude this and give the sangat something to look forward to which is this documentary is something we hope to bring to the world it's it's starting off in canada but i know it's something we want to screen worldwide and we want to bring to the wider audience and yeah. we, we we want to be able to um push that further so we're starting off with canada but of course a screening tour is 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 the goal for this my, my humble request about this to all of you that it's no, job is not done our kids need to see it so come it's our job as a parents so that our daughters our sons they know we we at least we can do is a show it to them so let's work together let's put forces together let's showcase it to them I think the job starts now okay product is made documentary is there but we've got to take it to them right so we're going to need your help absolutely and I think one thing to just uh, touch on before we do conclude is um you mention 
Kirtan's relationship with mental health and, and Gurbani and the Shabad's relationship with mental health. And that's something I know we've discussed and it's something we want to explore further for a secondary documentary. But what are your thoughts on the relationship between our mental health and b drawing a relationship closer to the Guru and the Shabad? See, when you're physically depressed, forget about the mental success. If you're mentally suppressed and depressed, forget about spirituality. And we're going through the both. We, you know, there's an identity crisis. Mm. That means, you, you know, physically we're st struggling. We are under depression. Yeah, and, and socially as well. So there is a one beautiful way to tackle, that's a Guru's Shabbat, but under Guru's prescription, with Guru's given to. So that's the angle. Gurus have given it to us. We can't change that. It's for the betterment. Kirtan was uh, a process given to the humanity for the betterment of the mental health. So they don't struggle when the challenge of cancer comes to them. They know how to beat it. So we want to share this with the world, not just with the Sikh community, Punjabi community, um, the Buddhist community. We want to share it with the entire world that you don't need to be afraid because Guru Nanak Sahib given us such a phenomenal program and let's be happy. Absolutely. So if the audience wants to know more about this, the website for it is sickmusicalheritage.com and if anyone wants to speak to yourselves and explore bringing this around to other countries and where they can find it, uh, I think the best contact place would be info at sickmusicalheritage.com perfect okay Sangatji we hope you enjoyed the show again this is a an introductory conversation about this documentary Sick Musical Heritage the Untold Story our goal and, and mission is to bring this to the global community we want to bring it to all wherever there is Sikh Sangat we want to try our best to bring it to them and to give this documentary the exposure and have the conversation about Kirtan and Gurbani and its relationship and the idea of preserving these instruments throughout the community. Professor Ji, thank you very much. Wahai Ka Khalsa, Wahai Ki Fateh. Thank you, Sikh Channel community. It's been a pleasure and I hope you enjoyed this conversation and we look forward to continuing this conversation with you. Wahai Guruji Ka Khalsa, Wahai Ki Fateh. I've always wondered about the history and heritage of the instrumentation within Sikh music and as we look around today I cannot seem to find enough examples of our traditional instruments and it makes me wonder what changed and why. We're going to be looking at the early origins, the history, important events, political influences and how advancing modernity have all affected Sikh musical heritage. The Sikh Gurus not only introduced the music and the tunes but also the musical instruments which were very very much required for the desired results on the listener. Most of the instruments they did it with Purnanak. The jury, it has a deeper sound than a tabla, very much like the pakawis. So the whole point of having a deeper sound is the lower the resonance, the more chance there is for the atoms within us to also resonate at that same frequency. Taus, the literal meaning is peacock and it's often said that this instrument is so wonderfully melodious it can take you to a complete heavenly state. My Taos is it's the paintbrush of my soul. Rag is to be felt. Rag is emotional attribute or emotional grammar to punctuate Guru's Shabbat. The first Anglo Sikh war was fought between the Sikh Kingdom and the East India Company between 1845 and 1846. It had a major impact especially on education, the arts, and music. 
what Empire did was to actually reconstruct the mind. And once people have entered into that mode of meaning making, they can't see that they were once attached to another mode of meaning making. Odevich Rabab te Jodi Kirtan Devich Chal Rehagi. The harmonium takate hani out of the harmonium cigavini. Majority 99.9% .9 of the Shabbats that I hear, the Kirtan that I hear, is not done the way that the Guru prescribed. Shabd Kirtan go, the Kishan play Kaina for me. Marriage.